Hey guys, it's Joel, and um, I wanted to start a series of book reviews on here because one of the things that I hear so, 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 so much in, amongst professionals and therapy and also probably other industries, and I know a lot of people that like books on psychology, um, is that it's very hard to find academic literature that is actually helpful. There's a lot of pop psychology books that are fine that say, you know, like people are bad at understanding systems and that's why we can't solve global warming is because we evolved to think on a small scale or, you know, something like that. The New York Times bestseller of the week. That stuff's fine, but I, I wouldn't really call that the kind of psychology book that I'm talking about. I mean, things that actually help you personally, professionally, and clinically. Um, and things that I've actually turned into, moda not modalities, but turned into techniques that I use with clients. Um, so I want to start a series on literature that I've found clinically helpful, personally helpful, and um, just has led to my professional growth. So the first one that I'm going to do today is called uh, Karen Horney's Neurosis and Hormone Growth. Karen Horney is the uh, author. It's H-O-R-N-E-Y. Uh, I really like Karen Horney. I don't, I'm not really huge into a lot of the old psychoanalytic stuff. I, mean, I think sometimes it overcomplicates things to turn it into this kind of Rube Goldberg machine to go back to places that... Uh, problems may or may not come from or maybe is a little overly intellectual even if it's right uh, which a lot of times I, I don't know that it is but even when like it's correct I don't know that it's actually helpful for patients to keep talking about how an attachment style is there to figure out why sometimes you just have to learn how to deal with the style and the way that it's affecting your behavior the way that it's affecting your relationships how it's coloring your personal mythology about the world around you how it's affecting your body your muscles your anxiety levels, your obsessive parts. Um, I think that's more helpful to people than sometimes trying to turn uh, psychotherapy into a Raymond Chandler novel mystery of why everything is the way that it is. Um, and that's just me, maybe not for you. But Karen Horney's Neurosis and Human Growth, it's definitely about that. It's a really old book. Um, but what's wild is she's such a good writer and the ideas are so good that it feels like it, it, you're just talking to somebody. I'm reminded of listening to Bessel van der Kolk's uh, The Body Keeps the Score. I was just like, oh my gosh, none of this is dumbed down. Cl clinically, all this is helpful. But I mean, I could give this to my grandmother and she could read it and it would make sense to her because he's such a plain spoken writer who takes really big ideas and then doesn't get lost in his own education. Um, he's able to take big ideas and just communicate them well. Um, I had somebody when I left college who had been out for a little while and he told me college is about expanding your words expanding all of these concepts and understanding all of them. And when you get out of school, that's completely useless if you can't take all of this and then reduce it to something that is simple that someone can understand. That you need to figure out after college how to take this jump, if you're going to continue to use it, to turn it into something that somebody can understand without a PhD or without just sitting and thinking about this one idea all day long. And she definitely does that. Um, I mean, the, the book is so well written uh, and... It is so easy to read. I mean, don't really get put off by reading this thing and being like, okay, this was big in the 50s. It's going to sound, um, it's going to be dense. It just isn't. Uh, it's a great book. And the audiobook of it's also very good. It's read really well. I've absorbed most of these on audiobooks because when I was preparing to go into psychotherapy, I was an outpatient social worker. And I worked for 10 hours a day. And I was tired. And I didn't have time to curl up with a book. But I was spending a lot of time in my car. So, Neurosis and Human Growth. Um, if you have a three-year-old like I do, that's mine looking through the window there, um, the premise of it will definitely be useful to you as something you've seen. Um, but So her premise in this book is that there's sort of three ways that the child tries to solve this problem of being separated from the mom as a, as a kid. Um, that when a baby is a newborn... When a baby's a young baby, the baby doesn't know that it's a separate creature from the mom. It thinks that it is part of her. And so when the baby wants food or the baby wants um, comfort and warmth, it just reaches out and this thing is there. It's part of its ego. It doesn't really know that it's a separate being. And if there's a kind of insecure interruption in that process, then the baby's ability to self-regulate because it thinks that that whole system is it is kind of thrown into chaos pretty early, um, which would be, you know, something like attachment theory, or uh, Jung has the idea of um, that we kind of introvert symbols into ourself, and that, that happens first with the mom. So Karen Horney's idea is that when a baby is being forced to realize that it's a separate creature, 
it feels like it's being obliterated. It feels like it's dying because it doesn't think that it can be by itself. And so when you have a child that's like two, um, you know, everything has been about it up to that point. And so, it, you know, it's like, okay, you want food, you want warmth, you want comfort, you just cry, you just call, and then here I am and I'm part of your system. And then all of a sudden when you get to be two, your parents are like, we don't really care what you want. You want to pee right there, but we want you to pee in this toilet and wait, even though that's not what you want to do. And then you don't get candy or you don't get affection unless you do that. Or, yeah, maybe you feel angry, but we don't care. Like, we don't want you to throw your spoon. If you throw your spoon, you're actually in trouble. What you want to do is wrong, which is this new idea for the child. So when all of a sudden the world is telling the child, like, this is not about you anymore. This whole thing is bigger than you. That's really overwhelming. And the child feels like it's, in her language, being obliterated. Or in my language, it feels like death to it. Because its ego, as it exists in that point, is dying. It's having to become a bigger thing. And so she says that, you know, we need this mixture of knowing how to reach out and ask for help, be assertive and stand up for our, ourself and what we want, kind of being aggressive, and to be able to go into our own head, understand things without help, and self-soothe, but that most people get kind of over-identified in one of those categories. So her system, she says, the, you know, when the baby is when going to the mom, it, it doesn't all of a sudden say, like, okay, now I am a separate creature. What happens is the two-year-old or one-and-a-half-year-old starts to realize, like, oh, my God, I'm a separate creature. I have all this independence. I have all this power. I'm God. And it's running into the street while you're yelling, stop, 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 and it won't do what you want because it's so caught up in its own individuality. And then all of a sudden it falls into crisis, like, at the worst time. And it says, like, I'm nothing. I can't exist. I don't have any independence at all. I want to remerge. I want to go back to mom. I want to be back in the womb. And it grabs onto mom's leg, and then all of a sudden is just stuck there, um, and it refuses to detach, you know, at a really inconvenient time when mom's trying to walk or cook or something. And so when this process of individuation is happening, the baby kind of tries three things to stay connected to the mom. And the first thing is moving towards people. It's figuring out that sometimes you just ask for help. And when you ask for help, help is given to you, that that's okay, that's safe. If it becomes over-reliant on that, if you're kind of neurotic in that category, that's when someone becomes codependent. They can't ever do something that somebody else doesn't like and, and, and be assertive and aggressive. And they also can't uh, calm down by themselves. So this is the person who like has to call you every time something bad happens. Oh my gosh, Like I need to reach out. I need to move towards people in order to regulate. Um, and in a really extreme case of neurosis in that category, you're going to be uh, you know, asking for... Um, like you're going to be codependent uh, and even unable to leave a relationship if you're being abused or, or, or mistreated. So if this fails, if the baby tries to do that and that doesn't work, the next thing it does is it tries moving against people, which is being angry, being assertive, being demanding, being aggressive, throwing a fit, um, maybe being funny in a very uh, look at me way. And that moving against people personality style is something that we need to try that and learn that sometimes it works and acquire that skill. Some parents over-encourage that, um, or it's the only thing they respond to, and then if the child becomes neurotic in that category, where that's the only part that's respected, that's like a, a extreme type A personality, where everything is a contest. Everything is a fight, and I'm never able to just sit down and kind of talk to another person. I'm trying to figure out who's winning and losing in every, or, or, in every conversation. You know, I'm not just coming in and hanging out with a group of people. I'm going like, all right, how much money do you make? How smart are you? Uh, yeah, but you said that and that disagreed with me. So how do I humiliate you now? And it becomes this kind of narcissism, antagonistic energy that you, you've probably seen a lot in life. Um, so that third category, if both of these fail, the child asks for help, it doesn't get it. It asks, it demands help and it doesn't get that. Then it moves into its own head. That's this moving away from people personality style. In that moving away from people personality style, um, the child, these people are going to be extremely creative. They're going to be systems thinkers that understand systems very well because they've moved into their own head. Jung, Carl Jung, is definitely this type of person to the point where he moves into his head so much he understands religion and systems and myth and the way that um, people are making meaning out of life in this kind of transpersonal level all the time. And that's kind of what Jungian psychology is, is analyzing. Um, and 
that moving away from people personality style, if you're kind of neurotic or over-dependent on that category, it doesn't cause as many problems as if you're over-dependent on the first two styles, but that doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. You get people who are incredibly obsessed with independence, but that comes out a lot of different ways. They don't all look the same. So somebody may want to be Jeremiah Johnson. They want to build a cabin on a mountain and they want to pickle their own vegetables and they have all of this stuff and that's their condition for feeling safe is that they're completely self-sufficient and completely alone. Um, so even though that is kind of a cool thing and maybe they make a career out of that or they're kind of interesting, it also, you should be listening as a clinician to hear this person doesn't feel safe very often and that is a problem. Um, it can also come out as this sort of obsession with like money but not in the way that the narcissist is. This more of like well, I'm not ever, the world is so big and scary and bad and there's all these calamities and people take advantage of you and the only way that you can ever be safe is if you make a million dollars or I've had somebody tell me a hundred million dollars. The amount changes, but people will say, this is the amount of money I have to have to feel safe. And I'm like, okay, fine. You know, you're smart. You can probably get that amount of money, but what if we could feel safe without it? Wouldn't that be great? Oh, no, no, I can't. Um, it also can come out as this like, kind of wisdom pr professional a lot of the time. You see therapists like this where there's this idea, and again, this isn't bad. I don't. None of these pieces of the personality are good or bad. It's that when you're not in touch with them, when you're not conscious of them, that's when they make problems for you. So I'm not saying that any of these things make you sick. Um, that's not the kind of therapist that I am. It's that sometimes they become inflexible when we're not aware of what we're doing. So, um, the wisdom professional thing is kind of where people are like over everything, overly existential, just kind of in their own head. They understand ultimately everything is pointless. This kind of mixture of Zen and, and, and a lot of times that becomes an impediment in relationships and growth too. So I think the book is great. I would definitely recommend it. Um, it's read so well and there's parts of it where she's kind of writing from the perspective of somebody in the style. And so the book is so engaging because she's saying like, um, you, you have taken something from him. He is angry with you. He wants it back. What is it? You ask him. He doesn't know, but he knows that you have taken it. It is his pride. And like I, my blood pressure was like going up when I'm listening to it because I'm remembering people that I knew in college and kind of reliving trauma probably uh, from Swanee. But uh, anyway, it is uh, really good. And it's I use it so, 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 so much. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've gone over the styles with a patient and kind of talked about those tendencies. And they've said, yeah. I'm afraid of this, I'm bad at this, uh, this is, and, and they ha immediately have insight in a way that it just takes so long to get to with other language, um, and I would recommend it. Uh, you can go to my website, gettherapybirmingham.com, under the resources for therapists. There's lots of worksheets based on this for free, but there's also a reading list where you can find this book and many other books. It is a Amazon affiliate link, so if you click it as a therapist and you buy my book, I get um, a small commission from that, and I, I want to be upfront and clear about that, but I didn't write it, and uh, otherwise, I'm recommending it to you because I like it, um, and I think it's a great book, and I want to have all those resources in one place for people. So, thank you, and um, if you have a question, leave a comment, and I'll talk to you later.